Hi, I am Dana K. White. I'm the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life, and I answer your decluttering questions or home maintenance routine questions. So I am excited that you're here. If you're watching the replay, welcome. And I am going to take questions that were submitted ahead of time at askdanakwhite.com. You can go there to ask questions for future lives. I will also uh, be answering questions in the future. Wait, what did I just say? I was trying to read a comment while I also did that, just making sure you could hear me. Uh, I will also be answering uh, questions asked live by those of you who are watching for the second half of the thing. Who knows what just came out of my mouth a minute ago. Hopefully it made any sense or at least wasn't inappropriate, right? Okay, thanks for joining me. I am gonna go ahead and answer a few of our questions here. I will read the actual question as it was asked. And then what you see here is an abbreviated version that would fit in our, our little thing there. Okay, do you have any tips? Although I think this is the whole one. Do you have any tips for starting the habit of the five minute pickup? I have had some partial success, but I'm not getting to it every day. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to answer this kind of in two parts. So the tips to getting started is to look for those awkward pauses in your day. Okay. Acknowledge that we really are talking about five minutes. We really are talking about picking stuff up and putting it all the way away, not setting it and sorting it to put away after the five minutes. Sometimes the reason I bring that up is that sometimes people hesitate because they feel like, Okay, it can't really just mean five minutes. But the reason I came up with five minutes for a five minute pickup was it was literally the least amount of time that I could justify spending on that. And then I was completely shocked at the power of that five minutes. Okay, so I don't do five minutes hoping I will trick myself into doing more. I don't like to be tricked by anybody or myself, right? And so really zone in on the five minutes means five minutes. So I've had some partial success, but I'm not getting to it every day couple things here is to remember that a five minute pickup is always worth it. Even if you forgot to do it for the last six days, it is still worth it to do a five minute pickup. Because the reason I bring this up is a lot of people like me who, you know, one time I felt so inept in my home. I was so overwhelmed by my home that I would be like, oh, five minute pickup. So that can make a difference. Okay, great. And then I would do it for a couple of days and then it would not even cross my mind. And I would think, oh, great. Now I got to come up with a different method than this five minute pickup. Okay. And instead, whenever you do it, it has value. You don't need to catch up from the other days. That doesn't mean you can't do more. But as far as like a five minute pickup, a five minute pickup means a five minute pickup means a five minute pickup. Look for those awkward pauses in your day where you just go, I don't really have a lot of time, but oh, wow, I wish I could do something and set the timer for five minutes. Okay. I actually find for myself that it does, it does not work as well for me to designate a very specific time of the day for it. Because what happens is when I said, I'm going to do this every day before dinner, or I'm going to do this every day before we go to bed, when I would forget, not if, because that's going to happen, right? Then I would think, oh, I forgot to do a five minute pickup last night. Oh, okay. All right. Tonight, 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 tonight's going to be the night. I'm going to remember tonight. And then I wouldn't remember. And I, the next day I would look around and go, oh, the house is, a, oh, I forgot to do a five minute pickup last night. And then I would wait and then it would just not work. Instead it's, oh, I meant to do one less. Oh, I'll do one right now. There is rarely a time where I don't have five minutes that I could focus on this. And because I know I really do mean five minutes and not a whole house cleanup, five minutes is worth my time to do, right? So really zoning in on, at, in the moment when I think of it, that's when I'm gonna do it, okay? As you do that, you will start to see and acknowledge what times of day that happens. Maybe it is in that, you know, for me, especially in the days, I'm not in these days anymore, but in those days where I was, you know, I had several years where I would take one kid to school at one time and then the other one's school didn't start for, you know, this, so I would come home for 20 minutes and then take the other one to school and it would be like, this is such, 
and I would realize, oh, this is my awkward pause. I generally can do a five minute pickup during this time. Okay. So I hope that's helpful, but really kind of taking off the, the, the unnecessary arbitrary rules around it and say, the only rule is that it's five minutes and it really means five minutes. Okay. I can do it whenever. And the more I do it, the more I see the impact, the more likely I am to think to do it again in the future. Uh, let's see. Next question. Recently mounted our TV a year ago, and so we don't need our large entertainment center. Neither my boyfriend or I are good at listing and responding to people on selling sites, but since he bought it, he still insists that it be sold. I would love to just give it away, though. The thing is just sitting, taking up space, and has turned into a dumping spot. I'm tempted, tempted to give him money and just pay a junk removal company, but I know he'd be upset. Do you have any ideas on how we can agree on getting rid of this thing? Um, I think because it is bothering you so much, I think offering to go through the process that he wants to go through. So, okay, how much do you want to list it for? All right, I will list it. Now, I get it. It can be, I, I hate listing things on online, right? Like it's not fun. I don't enjoy it. Every time I do it, I end up regretting it, right? Like I, I totally get what you're saying. And yet you want this thing gone this is the thing holding back. So it's kind of that take it there now. Okay, then let's do the thing. Because like, I know for my mother-in-law, she had a set of dishes, China, that um, her neighbor had sold her years ago and had, you know, told her was it a mate. She couldn't believe that she was selling it to her for so cheap. And so my mother-in-law lived really believing these were highly, highly valuable dishes. She never used them, not one single time. Okay. She had them in her closet. But when we were you know, downsizing her house to put her in assisted living. She was, had always talked about how valuable these dishes were, right? And that we had to sell them. I didn't want to sell them. I don't like selling things. I didn't really want to sell it on my profile, but at the same time, that was how it was going to happen. And so I listed them and I asked her, how much do you want for these? What do you want me to put them at? Now I had to, now with your husband or with your boyfriend, it's probably different because, um, you know, he understands more thing how things work with her you know she always thought you know list it high and then people could come down low and i'm like anyway so i had to kind of explain some of that stuff but um i i listed it for what she said i didn't like doing that i was embarrassed because i was like somebody out there thinks i really think someone's going to pay this much money for it but the reality was that listing it for that amount and then not getting any response was the thing that she needed to acknowledge that she wasn't going to get what she needed. You know what I mean? Like as long as it was out there and nothing was happening and it was an idea, then it, there was no reason for her to come down in her mind on how much money she should get for it. Um, and so it didn't sell. And she would ask, has anybody, and I'm like, no, nobody said anything. And I, you know, after a while I said, are you ready to, you know, lower the price? And she was, she was ready to lower the price. So we lowered the price and somebody did end up buying it for less. And I let her be the one to make that decision. But so as much as this is difficult and not fun and you don't want to do it, handling this stuff of, okay, he, this is what he wants to do with it. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and work on this. Um, or maybe even you saying, okay, I'll do it. And often that might be what makes somebody go, no, fine. I'll do it. And I'll do it now. Right. But it, it's that I, I really, it really does mean enough to me that I'm willing to go through this process. What is it that we have to do with it um, to do that? So it's not fun. It's not what you want to hear. I wouldn't want to hear that either. So I'm sorry to give the bad news, but that, that would be the solution that I would suggest. All right, next one. Uh, this one says, um, I'm ill and can't work. I sold on eBay for a while to supplement my disability income, but haven't done so in three to four years. I don't have any inventory left, but I do have equipment, packaging, etc. I don't want to do eBay ever again, but I'm holding on to the equipment in case I really need money and can't work a typical, typical job. There's technically room for me to store these items, but I just want to get rid of them. Is it a bad idea to get rid of them? No, it's not a bad idea to get rid of them. And you, you specifically said, I want to get rid of them. Go ahead. 
remember that you have the knowledge and skills to know how to obtain those things if you did need them in the future. Okay. So what you went through before, you could do that again, if you got to that point and it's going to be worth it to you to get this thing out of your house that you don't want to have in there to go ahead and let it go. It's going to help. Okay. Uh, let's see. Full question is, how do you handle when people don't understand why you're decluttering? I live with people who just don't see the mess and think I'm obsessing over something unimportant. Okay, this is a great question. And it doesn't have an easy answer, right? Because all relationships, all people are different. Uh, the way that I handle this as far as, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm not talking about my husband or anybody like that, but I felt like the same people that questioned my decluttering tended to have been the same people who were critical of my inability to keep my house under control. And, and so in some ways it was just, they were the people who were critical of me, period. Right. Okay. So whatever there was still, we had great relationship and all that, but this was a, this was a real issue for us. Um, I found that the best way to deal with this was not to try to, and I'm not in the same situation that you're in. Cause it sounds like you're living in the actual situation with these people, um, was not to try to convince them to think differently. It was to take all of the, uh, all of this need for decluttering and take it on myself and just say, I would just say things like, I've realized I can't handle a lot of stuff. I've realized that the reason things are messy and the reason that I leave things out and the reason that I have struggled is that I had more stuff that I could handle. So I'm getting rid of stuff so that I will be able to keep it under control easier, more easily so that it'll be easier for me to, to live in this space. And kind of take it all on as it's me because a lot of times what happens here is people can feel like it's a judgment of them like if you want to get rid of something then you know you're getting rid of your stuff and they say and they feel like well she's going to be coming for my stuff next so they're criticizing your stuff or, or like you know maybe you trying to get this space under control they feel is some sort of criticism of their space not being under control also with that, as I'm saying it, I'm realizing just to be clear, just to be sure, make sure you are focusing on your own stuff. Make sure that we're not talking here about their stuff. Because remember, it is so easy to see that their stuff needs to go. But if you have your own clutter that you haven't dealt with yet, then that's very offensive to the other people to fixate on their clutter. So in this situation, make sure that the stuff that you are decluttering is your stuff and neutral stuff first. Okay. Hopefully it will eventually get them to the point as they've lived in a house with less stuff, it's easier to manage. They see how the impact that it, decluttering has, then they'll be ready to get rid of their own stuff eventually. But even if it doesn't, even doesn't result in that your space will be easier for you anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have a friend who has lots of, let's see. Yeah. I have a friend who has lots of clothes everywhere. If you follow the principle of decluttering one spot at a time, how do you go about decluttering that spot? Okay. I don't know if that's somebody else's principle. I don't usually talk about decluttering one spot at a time. If you have say 25 solid black shirts job related that are in five different places, have you ever had a situation where gathering together many of a type of item into one space was necessary in order to know how to answer your questions and decide what gets donated and what gets kept? Okay. Make sure that you are following the actual process, right? So let's say that there's clothes everywhere in the room. Um, we're going to start with uh, whether it's in this spot or whether it's the whole room, whatever, we're going to start with trash. We're going to start with actual trash. And then clothes that are trash, you know, pulling those out, getting those trashed um, or send them to fabric recycling, whatever you want to do. 
Uh, and then we're going to get the easy stuff out because usually if there's clothes everywhere, there's other stuff mixed in with that. Right. But it feels like there's clothes everywhere. But in reality, there might be, oh, that's actually two pieces of clothing on top of an empty Amazon box, you know, that looks like a huge pile, but it's not. So we get the easy stuff dealt with and out of there. And then we go through the duh donations and we pull the duh things out because those are going to go straight in the donate box, which usually there's a lot of clothing that you can do with that with. OK, by the time we've gone through those first three steps, there is less stuff in here and you now acknowledge what it is that you're really dealing with so that by the time we get to the last step okay and then you can ask yourself the decluttering questions whatever of where would i look for this item first and you're putting it in that spot you know that part of the closet wherever so that those things are going there by the time you get to the fifth step of my process the no mess decluttering process by the time you get to that fifth step and that's when we consolidate which is what you're talking about here does it ever you know should you put like things together that is actually part of the process but it does not come first because that's how we end up with overwhelm because I'm like, well, I got to put all these things together and I'm pulling all these things without considering that a lot of the stuff that I'm touching is actually just trash or a donate, a duh donation, right? And could actually just go away and not have to do it. So by the time we get to that last step and we're consolidating, we're only dealing with the stuff that was not trash, that was not easy, that was not a duh donation. We are down to, and we've gotten everything out that needed to be out. So we're down to just the, you know, items. You know, if you have five work shirts, it's possible that uh, the duh donations or, or the the trash, when you ask, or is there any of the stuff that's ruined and, and just needs to go in the trash? There may be an acknowledgement that, oh, well, two of those shirts are actually ripped and torn or completely stained. Those are trash. And maybe that's the reason they had five, but we're not going to worry about why we don't ask the question why, right? Like that's not helpful, but it got rid of two so that we're not dealing with as many. And then maybe the duh donation step was, oh, well, actually that one can go too, because whatever. So, so going through the process and getting this stuff out before you ever get to consolidating, getting out the stuff that doesn't, I mean, that's wasting my time to consolidate things that have no business ever being here in the first place. Right. Okay. All right, I'm going to take some questions. Oh, I got through those questions pretty quickly today. So I'm going to take some of your questions from those of you who are watching live. Let's see. Um, I, I do want to remind you just of a couple things. If you want, if you're watching this in the future, not while it's live, and you want to ask questions for future lives, you can go to askdanakwhite.com. Also remember, if you need someone to lead you through my no mess decluttering process, go to declutteringcoaches.com. That is my website. Everybody listed on there is trained and certified by me. Okay. This is not like just a random thing. No, it, this is, these are all my coaches, right? So you can go there. If there's not one in your area, most of them also coach virtually, but there's a cute little map and you can click on the map where you are, see if there's someone near you um, or find someone who can work with you virtually. Okay. Uh, let's see here. If you've already asked a question, uh go ahead and ask it again with question marks at the front so that i'll you know have a more likely uh well, more likely actually do it. let's see actually see it what do you do when you come across a bunch of your husband's items and have no idea where they go okay so there's a couple options here sometimes i will send a picture to my husband and say, where would you look for this first? Now he's, he knows well enough to know what I mean when I say that, not that he won't argue with me, but like, he know, so he will say, Oh, you know, I would look for that on the shelf in my closet, or I would look for that, um, in the garage in that, you know, red toolbox or whatever. Um, so sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes that's not possible. The thing I would do there is to skip that and keep going with the stuff that you do, that you can make the decluttering decisions about. Okay. Uh, because here's what happened. <laughs> I had a post years ago where I, there was this, this, um, kind of a little shelf next to our breakfast table 
where we would, you know, sit in the mornings and stuff. And actually we had dinner there too, but just called up, called at the breakfast table. But anyway, there was this little shelf there and that shelf started just grating on my nerves because it was just this big, massive stuff. And I was like, that is his stuff. I mean, I was like, cause I could see that his headphones and his whatever were on there. And I was just like, Oh, I got to get him to deal with that. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just look for trash that is obvious trash, easy stuff that I do know where it goes and any of my stuff that I could actually make decluttering decisions about. And I did that and the space looked so much better. I mean, like so much better than I did before. And it made me feel better. And then he came home that night and he saw it and he went, Oh, Actually, these are the old headphones that I don't like anymore. I can just donate these and blah, blah, blah. Because all the stuff that was there that it wasn't all his and it wasn't all mine, but I only saw his stuff and he only saw my stuff as the problem. When all of my stuff and the neutral stuff was gone, the stuff that was his, he saw it clearly and easily. It wasn't overwhelming anymore and was able to deal with it and did deal with it. I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but skip and, and move to the stuff that you can deal with. Uh, let's see the awkward pauses have been saved my life. Yes. I am really a big fan of the awkward pauses, looking for those awkward pauses and knowing what to do in an awkward pause. If you have an awkward pause, do the dishes. If you have an awkward pause, throw away trash. If you have an awkward pause, do a five minute pickup. I, Oh, I love it. You just did a five minute pickup in your 14 months old month old room. It totally tidied the room. That's the goal. That's being under your clutter threshold when a five minute pickup gets a space back under control on a normal day. What should be done with the last of random things left when moving is an imminent? Been packing and donating a lot, but now moving day is almost here and there is no time to sort. First of all, I'm sorry that you're going through that. Also, you are you're right. I mean, like there comes a point in the moving process where you have done the right thing all the way through. And now it's just, everything's getting thrown in a box, right? Uh, I would just label it as that. I would, I would just acknowledge you have to do what you have to do. And as you're throwing it away, make sure you've got the donate box and the trash bag right there next to the box. So that as you're throwing stuff in, if you're able to acknowledge that something is trash or a dead donation, you can go ahead and stick it in there. And it's just one less thing to, to have to go. But um, it's not a, there's not an easy answer because moving is kind of awful, right? But yeah, this is, I, I had the same thing happen. Uh, let's see. Okay. So to be, so I'll read your question. Trying to Swedish death claim my granny's house where five adults live. They are all passed away. I'm so sorry. I'm left with things, nothing of anything left is just sentimental. Help me. Okay. So I don't, I've never read Swedish death cleaning. I don't know anything about it. My understanding though, is that I think it's for you to do, not for someone to do with your stuff. I think it's anyway, but I, again, I don't, I literally know nothing about it. So what I teach is my five-step no mess decluttering process. Same thing, right? As you are dealing with all this stuff, start with the trash. Okay. Um, and maybe you've done all of that. Okay. Since you said everything left is sentimental, but it, every time you walk in there, say, I'm going to see if I can throw away some trash because going through the process helps you start to identify things as trash that didn't look like trash in the beginning. Right? So throw away trash, anything that's easy. The other thing I would say is look at, take pictures of your own home before you go work there and everything that you come across that you think I can't let this go, ask yourself the decluttering questions. Where would I look for this first? Oh, I would look for this first in the kitchen cabinet up there on the left. Okay, flip through your pictures and see what your actual kitchen cabinet looks like. And is there room for this item? And if there's not, are there things that I'm gonna be willing to get rid of for that? That, that works. There, there are no exceptions to the decluttering questions. It works for valuable items. It works for sentimental items. It just works. Okay. It's, it's where would I look for this first acknowledging 
whether I would look for it or not and taking it to that space and acknowledging the reality of that space. Because what you don't want to do is just say it's all sentimental and bring it all home. And then you end up in in that situation. You're going to shop from this space, pick out the most important things and then go to those pictures and say, you know, or if somebody's at home, say, hey, can you go? Can you go take a picture of this specific shelf so that I can see if I'm going to have room for this thing? Because it will change how things feel and look to you. It you absolutely can keep it, but you can't keep everything right. And your house be able to stand or control. Um, where can I store baby gear, clothes, toys if I'm planning to get pregnant again in one to three years and I live in a small apartment? Okay, so. Um, this is a classic question my number one piece of advice would be if you have anything else to declutter first before you make these decisions do that start by decluttering other stuff because the decluttering muscles that you're going to build will change how this stuff that feels all important and all that it will change how that looks to you by the time you get to it. You also very well may free up some storage space. Okay. Um, for these items. So, so don't start with this thing. This teachers that have changed grade levels and quilters, these are the, this is the question that I get all the time. It's like, this is the big daunting decluttering decision. What if, what if I don't know what's going to happen. Don't start there. Start with stuff that is easy for you and it will either change how you view this stuff or it will open up space for it. Um, The reality is in the end, what space do you have in this apartment to be able to live your right now life with the people who actually live there right now that you can devote to this? Maybe it's a small closet. Maybe it's uh, one cabinet. And the reality is it can be hard, right? Like I can't keep everything, but you, if it's going to make it hard for you to live your right now life, but as you look at it, you realize, okay, that's the space that I have. What of this stuff is most important? And then that deserves space first. And the size of the space determines how much I can keep. Okay. I am cleaning for a, oh, sorry. (laughs) I'm cleaning for a friend who is drowning in clutter. The clutter makes it hard for me to get the, get to the surfaces to clean. Any suggestions what I can do to help her get her head above water? Yes, I would print out the five-step decluttering process and I would take it with you and work through the process. Say, okay, you really want me to clean in the kitchen, so let's declutter in here first, okay? Really focusing on those surfaces and go through the process. What in here is trash? Remember, it's her definition of trash, not yours. You're not going to argue over trash or convince that it's trash. You're just going to ask what trash, okay, let's get rid of that. Let's move on to the next and then go through the decluttering process with her. I know it sounds like, oh, that's going to waste so much time, but the reality is if there's clutter everywhere and you can't get to the surfaces, even if you move it to get to the surface, it's going to go right back. So the goal is to give things either a real home or get them out of the house. So I would follow that five-step process. Uh, let's see. Do I recommend that you read my books in a particular order or does it not matter? It doesn't really matter. Um, I, here's how I recommend it. Um, if you are completely overwhelmed, like, I don't know how this is hard. My house is an actual disaster area and I don't know why it seems easy for other people. What are they doing that I'm not doing? I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and it's just so hard. That's how to manage your home without losing your mind. Okay. Uh, And it talks you through the basics of the things that you need to do to keep a house under control, how to make yourself or get yourself to do that addresses all your, you know, hesitations in that. Um, If decluttering is the issue, uh, really for anybody though, but decluttering at the speed of life. I don't think I have a front copy facing of that to point to, but decluttering at the speed of life is the one for that one. And that one applies to everybody. Like we all have clutter. It will change how you think about your stuff and go through that. Um, organizing for the rest of us is like the abbreviated version of all of it in little tip format with, with pictures, right? Let's see if I can 
find a picture to show you. But anyway, um, why does it always open to this one? There's me brushing my teeth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really matter the order. Oh, there we go. Huh. Um, sister in another state for a family emergency. And since the crisis has passed, I've been working one-on-one -on -one with your amazing no mess progress process and progress only container method. She is now a firm believer. She had said she couldn't get rid of much but wanted me to walk her through the process with all of her linens. She purged five extra large garbage bags and three bins of towel sheets, quilts, and table linens. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. It works, y'all. The process works. That makes me so happy to hear. Uh, let's see. Why can't I get started? I know I would feel better just getting it done, but it's been years and I still do nothing. What are a few common reasons and solutions? Okay, so I would recommend decluttering at the speed of life for you because I address, there's so much here, right? And I know I was in the same situation as you and I was, there was not a simple answer. There was not a 30 second answer that was gonna change my life. So decluttering at the speed of life is the answer to these questions. But just to say real quickly, um, I, I do want to point out, you said, I know I would feel better just getting it done. But done is too daunting for where you are. Okay. You are at a point where you want it to be done, but that's so far in the distance. It's so far from where you are right now that it's hard to even start because it, it, there, it's just so much. So instead, focus on less and better. I'm going to make this space better. There is no way to fail at better if you do anything at all. So focus on making this space better. And, and that means throw away trash. Do the easy step. Take easy stuff that has an established home to its already established home without stressing over, you know, you know, if it's something that, oh, I don't know what, then that's not easy. Right. And we just do that. So follow the process in a visible space and know that because it is progress and only progress, this is my no mess decluttering process because it is progress and only progress one item at a time, final decision by final decision, which the process talks you through that. Uh, you can stop at any time and it will be better than it was before and change that focus. And that changing my focus to better is the thing that allowed me to finally get to the place where I always wanted to be. But as long as I was just looking at where I was and where I wanted to be, that distance was too daunting. So don't look at that. Just look at better, better, better. Okay. Um, let's see. Yay. It says, hi, internet lady going on two months and I'm still at it. Thanks to you. Although I have, have had a few days of rest at this point since the whole family is sick. That's the beauty of the no mess process. You can rest when you need to rest. That's actually the theme of this week's podcast, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I feel like I'm drowning. I have two toddlers and I'll do the daily stuff for a bit, but life will happen and I won't be able to keep it up. And the house is crazy again. How do you keep it under control? Two toddlers. There's not a way to keep it always under control. That's just not the reality, but the less stuff you have, the more or the longer it stays under control easily. Okay. You have a lower clutter threshold right now than you maybe did in the past. And sometimes that's hard to adjust because you have two toddlers. You literally can't handle as much stuff because you've got two toddlers to deal with. So declutter, declutter, declutter until you hit the point that's your clutter threshold. It's the point is the amount of stuff that you personally can keep under control easily. The only way to find it is to declutter. So just keep decluttering and then you will hit a point where you realize, oh, okay, I can actually do this in the actual phase of life that I am in right now. Uh, we did, we did. Um, we came in third. Now, to be clear, you win by um, you win by raising the most money, right? Um, and I, we came in third, but it was nice because the people who actually came in first also were the best answers, you know, so I was not resentful at all. I feel like we were very entertaining, not necessarily 
the best dancers. But we were very entertaining and we did great. I, I, we had literally, it was one of the most fun things I've done in years. Is five minute pickup for your whole house or per room? Yes. Uh, do you include decluttering and five minute pickup things for all your health? Yeah, it can be either or however you want to do it. Um, it, I think it's a good rule of thumb, especially as you're just getting started decluttering and you know that the five minute pickup, getting it back under control is the goal. Five minutes in a room is great. Ultimately, five minutes of the whole house with everybody who lives there all doing the five minutes, that is the goal. But it's, it's, it's such a learning process to really focus that five minutes on a room and see if that can get it back under control. Um, do you include decluttering in your five minutes? Uh, absolutely. If there is room in the five minutes for that. Okay. I use the same process from the decluttering process in the five minutes, meaning I start with the trash and then I do the easy stuff, which is the things that have established homes. So that's basically putting, picking things up and putting them all the way away. Um, if there's still time, then uh, like, let's say in three and a half minutes, I got all the trash and easy stuff dealt with. Well, then I'm going to, you know, pick up something that's out of place. I wasn't easy. I didn't know where it went. I'm going to ask if I needed this item, where would I look for it first? And then act on that instinct and take it there now. What can be done with the last? Oh, I think I've already answered that one. Let's see. Can you talk about identifying our own unique struggles? Dishes are fine, etc., but paper and excess are so hard to get to. Um, I no, because that's not really what I do. But what I do is follow the process. I know people get tired of me saying that, right? <laughs> um, follow the process, and what I find is that. As I am making progress with actual trash leaving, following the visibility rule, it starts to just clarify what it is that my struggle is, right? Like, and remember that when I say trash, I mean actual, easy for you to identify trash. I am not talking about going, is this trash? Is this not? My mom would say this is trash. My aunt would have kept it forever and blah, blah. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, oh, yeah, trash. Yeah, that can go. That is what we mean. And so as you go through this in a visible space so that you're seeing the impact and you're seeing, wow, decluttering makes my life easier. As you do that, it starts to just clarify where the struggles were for you. Uh, let's see. Because the problem that I find is so many times when we want to figure it out before we do it, and that is a very normal thing for uh, people like me who are big thinkers, big planners, who like to play out in our minds how everything is going to go, um, nothing happens. And then it builds and gets worse. And then it's more overwhelming. And I think I've got more to figure out. So instead, that action of starting to make some progress with the non-emotional decision-free stuff takes me farther in that. Uh, let's see. What do you do if you have clothes that you really like that are a bit snug, but you need them out of your closet? I want to store them where they are not forgotten. Okay. Um, it really depends on where you would look for it first. That's a couple of things, right? Where would I look for, for clothes that fit again? I guess is what you're asking, right? Like clothes that used to fit and then didn't fit and now fit again at some point. Where would I look first for that? That's where you should store it. And the reality of that space is it determines how much of those kinds of things. Okay. So if you're like, if you ask yourself the question, where would I look for clothes when I am at a point where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm back in whatever size and I could wear the, those clothes yet. Where would I look for them first? If you're like, ah, I would never go looking for them. Then that's your answer, right? But if you have a place where you go looking for them, your answer being you shouldn't keep them if you would never go looking for them. We need to be, we need to accept that reality, right? But if I, you know, and the reality is that, oh, if, if you imagine yourself in that situation, and you realize, oh, I would never go looking for it because I would just go buy new clothes. 
because that is something that you're able to do if you're able to do that, then that means that those things, you know, need to go because that would just be bringing more clutter into your house. If you have a place where you would go look for them because you know the reality that you wouldn't, you know, either wouldn't want to or wouldn't be able to afford more clothes, where's the place where you would go look for it? And then that space, that shelf, that, um, you know, whatever, that tub, that spot in the garage that where you can put a tub, uh, that determines how much you can do. And then you're putting things in there according to, okay, these are things that don't fit right now, but I'm hoping they'll fit again in the future. And I put them in this, this place where I actually would go looking for it. And just the fact that that place is limited makes everything look different. And you're like, oh yeah, it doesn't fit. I cannot stand this thing. Even when I could wear it, it does not deserve space in there and it becomes a donation. So going through that process really helps. Oh, let's see. We are moving before March is over. Piles that contain a lot of easy stuff. Do I take the time to put easy stuff in their homes now, then pack or just pack and sort a new home? I would put them, if it's easy, I highly recommend that you go ahead and take it to the place where you would look for it first. It's going to just streamline everything along the way. Other thing that happens is when you say, okay, this is easy. Oh yeah, this is easy. This goes in the primary bedroom, blah, blah, blah. So you go to take it there now and you realize as you start taking a step that you're like, actually, that's a dead donation or that's actually just trash. But as long as we're just putting it off in the future, it is rarely just that I'm physically putting it off. I'm also usually often mentally putting it off and, and, you know, just, I'm just not gonna think about, I'll know better in the future what to do with this, but taking things to their already established homes is just going to make the, the unpacking process. You, you'll be very glad that you did it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, we already got that one. I inherited literally hundreds of paintings from my artist mother-in-law. They are beautiful, but we have to reduce the collection. Any idea how? <laughs> Plus you love Reed's editorial comments. Okay. Um, on this, I highly recommend that you uh, pick your favorites first and start hanging them on the wall. Pick your favorites first. Hang it up. Next favorite, hang it up. Your walls are a container, right? And the reality is that if you try to keep more than you can put in your house and enjoy, and I don't mean cover up every bit of wall space, but you know what I mean, right? Because she wouldn't want that either, right? Put it in these spaces, go ahead and hang it up. That is the taking it there now. And it will naturally sort out what is most favorite versus not quite as favorite or most fit your life versus doesn't. And the things that don't, those things can go live a life of art somewhere else, right? But if you keep them in your house piled, which you're not saying this, but if you keep them in your house piled up or stacked up, they're just going to get ruined. And that's where the real guilt comes in, right? So, uh, you know, putting, going ahead and picking your favorites and hanging them up, not going for perfection, but literally say, I've got to get this on the wall. I'm going to put it in the best possible place that I have for it now. It just will help naturally sort that out. Okay. Um, let's see. I know you didn't put any question marks here, but I'm still going to do this one. I always get stuck with stuff and I can't answer any of Dana's questions. Uh, like a cute cardboard vending machine, my daughter made me for Mother's Day. She worked so hard on it and I can't let it go. Okay, let's follow the process. If I needed this cute cardboard vending machine, where would I look for it first? Okay. Where's the first place that pops in your mind? You can't let it go. That's perfectly fine. Where's the first place that pops in your mind? for this cute cardboard vending machine. If this pile was gone, right? Uh, I would look for it on the um, 
you know, that space above my kitchen cabinets. I would look for it up there. There's some sentimental stuff up there uh, that, you know, is like displayed up there. Okay, let's take it there right now. Is there room for it there? If there's no room for it there. Am I willing to get rid of something else off there to put it up there and just go through the reality of the process? And because the problem is sometimes we think, oh, that thing won't work. So I'm just going to leave it sitting there. And then it's just guilty when in reality, if you love that thing, then give it a place of honor where you can enjoy it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is it common to get bored with decluttering? Absolutely. Decluttering is not fun. Do not. I was going to say, don't believe the people who tell you it's fun. I'm sure it's fun for them. But the goal here is not to learn to love decluttering. I don't love decluttering. I don't ever look forward to it. I never go, oh, let me get my hands on that space. I don't do that. I don't like it. And, you know, I, but I hear a lot of people who, whose houses are perfect will say things like, I just love decluttering. I have so much fun throwing stuff away. And I'm like, great. But the old me used to think, well, okay, well then that's the answer. I need to get to the point where I love it. I still don't love it, but I love my house and my house is so much better. So yeah, getting bored with decluttering is great, but that's also why I say start in those visible areas so that the work that you do has a huge impact on your actual home and on you enjoying your home. And you start to go, okay, I really like that space being under control and, and decluttered, which then increases your decluttering energy and keeps you going. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I love how y'all are just talking to each other. Um, yeah, so much conversation. I love it. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have a one donation place in our town and about an hour away from a larger city. Regularly, our donation place has a sign up saying they are not taking donations. What to do? Yeah, this, this happens to me a lot, too. Um, remember that going and delivering your donations is a valid use of your decluttering energy. It can feel like that's a wasted day to drive an hour away or whatever. Um, to the, to the larger city to find another donation place, but it is not a waste of your time because that stuff being gone is the thing is what really, really moves your house forward. So uh, it's tough. Or, you know, you can always post it on Facebook and say boxes of stuff that I was going to donate that the place is closed. Anybody want it? I mean, I always feel a little bit bad, but I'm like, I have to trust that, you know, they have something to do with it. And it's not just going to add to their own clutter. That's their decision that they're making. Um, but yeah, or, you know, a must take all something like that. But just remember, it is a valid use. It also sometimes that's where you have to go. I wanted to donate this stuff. This iffy stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? It's probably actually trash. It is not worth the gas for me to go, you know, so but you got to make progress in your house. OK. Uh, Have I moved to the new office completely? Yes, I have. How is the neighbor's donkey? She is good. She's great. Uh, let's see. Betsy is good. What do I do? I'm not yawning because your question I just oh, it hit me. Um, what do I do when I go to return an item to its proper place, but I can't even reach it because there is so much stuff on the floor in the way? Okay. You get it as close to it as you can and you remove something so that you are not making that space any worse. You're not going to get distracted by that space. You are not going to stop and deal with that space because you've got the space you want to keep making progress on that you were working on initially, which is hopefully your visible space. You go to put it there and you say something has to leave. This is net gains decluttering. Okay. I am going to continue to make my overall house better. So something here, it's a pile. You just said it. So it has to have something that is trash or a dead donation. So what can I remove from this space to where when I leave this here as close as I can get it to the place where I would look for it first, something else has left. 
Okay, so I'm not leaving it any worse. And ideally it's trash or the donation because your trash bag and your donatable donate box are back at the space you were originally decluttering. And that's how my whole house moves forward, moves forward, moves forward. Okay. Let's see. Is it okay to set time limits? I do 30 minutes, have a timed 10 minute break, and then reset timer for 30 minutes again to a max of eight hours. If it helps you, absolutely. I don't do this because it backfires on me, right? Like I start to do 30 minutes and then I start to feel like I am a grown 50 year old woman and I don't have to do 30 minutes if I don't want to. And it just backfires. That's just my personality. I was gonna say for good or bad, but it's mostly bad, right? But also eh, it is what it is. I'm 50. I just, I am who I am that lady now, right? Um, I've been that lady for a really long time. Uh, so if it works for you, absolutely. What I don't want you to do is to say this is the way it should be done and then it doesn't work for you and so you just stop the reason that i am so passionate about my no mess decluttering process is that i can work in any amount of time and only make this space better which means i don't have to predict how much time i'm going to have or want to spend in this space i can work for three minutes five minutes five hours five days and I will only be going along the path, making real, actual progress that's unbacktrackable. Okay, so, so just just be careful of that. I mean, so yes, it's great, but um, and I think one of the things you said is it okay to set time limits? Like, are you feeling guilty that you're not pushing, pushing through? I think it's fine as long as you're following the no mess process. Then thirty, you can make a huge impact on a space in thirty minutes. Let's see, one more. Let's see, any advice for decluttering yearbooks and classroom? Same thing as any, I'm not gonna say keep or toss. I'm gonna say, if this is your yearbook, okay? If I was looking for my second grade yearbook, where would I look for it first? And then take it there now. Is there room for it there? Do you not wanna get rid of anything for this? Okay, then this can go. Or is your answer, uh, blah, 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 you know, and then you say, if I was looking for my second year, you know, second grade yearbook, would it ever occur to me that I had it? And then that is the thing that lets you toss it. But just saying, should I keep this or should I toss it often shuts people like me down. Okay. Same, same thing with the classroom. Let's see one more. I thought I said one more, but I'm going to do one more. Um, yes, I will. I'm not going to talk about what it is, but I actually just turned in a manuscript on a week. Yeah, a week ago last Thursday. So two weeks ago, Thursday. Anyway, but it won't come out for a year. So, all right. This has been fun. Y'all are so great. I love hearing y'all or seeing y'all talk to each other and encourage one another. So uh, don't forget that if you want to ask questions for future lives and you're not able to be here in person to try to get your question answered, you can ask it at askdanakwhite.com. And also you can get a copy of my five-step process that is in decluttering the speed of life and organizing for the rest of us. Uh, you can get those at a slob, uh, wait, get the printable of the five steps at a slobcomesclean.com slash five. Slobcomesclean.com slash book is where you can find the books um, or just where, search Dana K. White, wherever you are. And uh, if you want somebody to help you through the process, like help you guide you through the process with your stuff, go to declutteringcoaches.com to find my, they're all my trained and certified coaches. All right. I'll talk to y'all later.